Hey, it's Jonathan Davis, and we're going to be talking Outer Banks spoilers for episode 7. So, if you haven't seen episode 7, don't watch the video unless you want it spoiled. Why do people do the things they do? I never thought it was that complicated. You do what seems right in the moment. It was another kind of just spontaneous thing. We're like, well, what if we give her the voiceover? We'd always thought about, you know, films like Goodfellas where the voiceover changes from Ray Liotta to Lorraine Bracco, you know, halfway through. So it was something we'd always thought, like, well, at some point we could we could give the mic to another character. And it was just a moment where Sarah really needed to be able to speak and unpack her feelings in a way that only a voiceover could do. I was really excited that they trusted me with it. I, I liked it a lot. I, again, like, there's a lot of things that happened this season that have to do with Sarah's like internal. There's a lot of emotional recall that Sarah does, and there's a lot of like you know emotional reckoning, and there's a lot of I don't know. There there's there's a big inward journey for her, and so I feel like it really emphasized in a really wonderful way like what's going on in her mind, because she does some things this season which like when I first read the script I was like, what the f <laughs> like why is she like why why is she doing this besides for like purely drama reasons like why why would she do this and and I really really appreciated the the voiceover because I think it kind of helps us get into her head a little bit and see how she's feeling she's confused like she's a little lost like she said goodbye to her old life and now she has this new one and now she feels like she had such a grip on on this new life and her like newfound family and all of a sudden it feels like it just slipped through her fingers like you know how is she like what's going on up here and I really I was very excited that they trusted me with that. I just thought he was the perfect guy. Polite, sweet, from a good family. He was everything John B wasn't. But the heart wants what it wants. Yes, yeah, so the flashback scene to high school was, it was fun. It was, uh, you know, got dressed up in our uniforms. We had all the extras out there. Very cute, but I definitely feel like I look older than in the first season. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I buy it. <laughs> I don't know if I buy how old I look. It was cool to set that, that kind of that groundwork where, all right, they're, they, you know, casually met in high school and um, here they are now and <laughs> things have changed a little bit. You and John B are just, y'all are done? No, I, well, I don't know. I don't want to be. Like, since the island, everything has felt so abnormal, and it just felt nice to feel something normal again, and I, like, I'm a mess. I feel like such a mess. I think we're all a little messed up. I liked it a lot. I've been wanting those moments for a really long time. Madison and I have talked about it forever because we have this, we talk about this friendship existing prior to season one, but we haven't really seen any like one-on-one -on -one between the two. Me and Maddie were so excited to have more scenes with us. She's a great, phenomenal actress to work across from and entertaining and on her toes. I know if I throw something at her, she'll throw right back at me and we can have fun with our scenes. She's an incredible actress and she's also so much fun to work with and I think there's a lot of our kind of friendship dynamic that we put into Sarah and Kiara that makes it really real and fun and silly and goofy and she's incredible at improv. She's really fun to bounce off of. I, I enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite scenes to shoot this season. I like that you get to see their characters connect more because I mean, in, when we started, Kiara was the one. Where am I? Where do I? Where do I fall? Kook or my Pogue? And now we see Sarah in the same position. I mean, even when she hops on the voiceover and is like, "I'm stuck in between Kook and Pogue," and I think that maybe Sarah and Kiara have like almost never related to each other more than they do now. I needed to see you, Sarah. I just needed to tell you I'm sorry because I am no, so. No, you stay right there. Do you know how stupid this is? If anybody sees you, you go to jail. If I yell and the cops come, you go to jail. I don't think you're gonna do that. Try me. I already did. In my mind, Sarah had an idea. Maybe, like, there was a chance that it was, like, a trick because Camerons are sneaky. 
sneaky family. And so I kind of wanted to play it like she had kind of psyched herself out a little bit about it. Like just kind of prepared for the worst, hope for the best type of thing when she walked in. And then I think the whole scene, you know, it's the first time she's seen her dad since the container ship. So it's really, it's really heavy. And it's a lot of like pent up emotion. I think it's kind of like, um, and like a, I think it's kind of like an emotional vomit moment. And also one of the first times she's able to really like download onto him. And it was very complex. The whole father-daughter dynamic with Ward has been really complex. Um, but I'm, I was also really, really excited because I um, got to work with Chip again and I didn't know when that was going to happen. It personally, it was me, we. And um, but also still trying to contain that and, and maybe channel it into like that emotion necessary but yeah it, it it was yeah it was a very big emotional download day and i felt like it was one that sarah needed she's not like she it was kind of like the the moment where like the child becomes a parent type of a thing which i think you know at some point and you know in our lives if we're lucky to have our parents around long enough that happens sometimes with sarah it just came a little bit earlier because she has a better head screwed on than her dad i mean listen this is just a which is a very tiny fraction of it, so. You melted it. <laughs> yeah, I melted the cross of Santo Domingo. Yep, melted it. How could you do that, Rafe? How could you? I'm trying to make money off of this. What are you what are you talking why? About? Because you can't trace spare parts, There's... Dad. What are you talking about? Spare parts is. It's priceless. It's one of a kind. There's what just. Is the issue? Oh my God. Ward coming back is another catalyst for him to, uh, you know, really be proactive. Uh, be proactive and, and, and gain his own independence back. I think, you know, having his father right in front of him, again, telling him, trying to give him direction, telling him what to do, you know, offering a suggestion for his own gain, I think Rafe sees right through that now, or he thinks he does. You know, I think he's built it up in his mind to where he, he's created his own world and he goes, no, 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 I'm the only, I'm the only one holding the truth now. So yeah, I just think it just propels him further, even faster, to like make a name for himself and make a name for his family without his father's help for the first time in his life. So yeah, it gets a little crazy. <laughs> I have something I need to tell you. Okay, talk to me. I made a mistake. And it's not something I planned and it's definitely not something I would ever do again. And What's going on, Sarah? I kind of hooked up a topper. Um. It was a mistake. It's, it's, that scene was like somehow cursed. It was like every single time we tried to shoot it, something would happen. Like natural things would happen, like bad weather, or like lightning or, you know, whatever. Um, so <laughs> I had like, been preparing for this scene for months. Yeah, it, that's an emotional scene. I think, you know, it feels, I think Sarah feels really guilty. I feel like she feels like she's kind of f***ed up. And, you know, I know she, you know, she's definitely doing her best and being honest. But, you know, at the same time, like, she was also kind of, you know, she was manipulated. She was lied to. She, she was, you know, her best interest wasn't protected. She was kind of, like, kicked out of, like, you know, her home, the, you know, the one she's been living in, like she was done dirty as well. So I feel like there's a lot of confusion. Like I know I've done wrong, but I also feel like I've been done wrong. And I need to be honest because I'm, I'm, you know, she's a good person. She tries really hard, I think, given her family, they you know the family she comes from. So it was, you know, there was a lot of dynamics, love triangle, of course, love and chaos. It's Outer Banks, what, what do y'all expect? <laughs> and no hard feelings, bro. We good? No, let me know. Oh. 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 You like that oh. shit, Top? Oh. Huh? Huh? Stop, Tommy. Tommy. No. Stop. Stop. What are you doing? No, stop. Hey, stop. What are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey
The smirk that Topper gives John B, I'm just like, all right, here we go. It's going down. Like that's all it took to to egg him on and be like, no hard feelings, bro. Like he, obviously, there's hard feelings, um, which created some sort of reaction from John B. I think he was instigating it. Topper has won every fight thus far, so I think you know his ego is like. It's, it was kind of a power move in his head to go, all right, I'm gonna get a reaction out of this guy. I'm not even gonna defend myself. I'm gonna let him punch me and hopefully get sent to jail. Like I was setting him up in a way. So there's, there's always that underlying war between the two. I think, uh, you know, anytime you get hit with something like that in that news, um, I can only imagine that it, it provokes an emotion that you just can't control. And I think, Austin does an incredible job with Topper in those moments to like just poke you enough, just poke the bear a little bit to make it work. And, and uh, you know, I think in the same ways that Sarah was experiencing her environment sh shifting and changing and not having a lot, John B can be selfish in times and want what he wants in, in a timely manner that is just for him. So I think he wasn't expecting it. And whenever you get caught off guard with, with any news and, and nonetheless, your, your wife cheating on you with the one person on this planet you never wanted it to happen with, um, it, yeah, I think it would provoke an action or a response like that. Um, definitely in the sense of the time of it, it was not so great, you know, with Kiara's parents and their, um, you know, wedding anniversary party. It's he, he he needs to work on his timing in certain circumstances. I'll say. I've done a lot of fight scenes with with Chase, and it's it it does get technical with the camera work and the movement. You really want to make it look natural, but uh, it was it was a lot of just like whipping my neck, you know, over and over again to get the right shot. And uh, you know, I'm on the ground, and we're dealing with like you know bloody nose and all this different stuff. But I think the scene turned out really intense. I was really happy with it. It felt so bad for Austin. I was like, after every take, I'm like wiping and taking like the grass blades off of his face. I'm like, hey, are you okay? I'm like, you good? You got it? I was like, yeah, 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 I'm good. Help each other out and then laugh in between takes. But it was uh, the doozy of a night for sure. What's wrong with you? You're really acting like you don't care? I mean, seriously. You're like acting like I don't care. Like, I love you, dude. What? I mean, thanks, okay, great, no, look. It's not gonna work, okay? She really wanted to connect with him and they hadn't been able to, and she wanted, she kept trying to reach him. And Madison's performance is really great in this scene. It's like, I love when she goes, I love you, dude. You know, like, uh, says it in such a good way. Um, I mean, when like if from the script and like you know sometimes like the script you're like oh the script was better than like it didn't like quite come together the way you thought and that when you see it on screen you're like oh my god like that's that's better than what you know it's better than anything you could have written like just because her performance is it's like so believable yeah you're right I love you dude like that was you know, it's just it's so nice well first I read it was like is this the moment <laughs> is, is this the I love you and. Um... Again, talking with our creators, and they were like, this is the moment. I mean, it's not like an I'm in love with you profession, it, like confession. It's like, how can you not see how much I love you? Like, I love you as a friend. I love you, like, deeply. I will always, like, be there and, like, protect you, kind of, I love you. And when he's just, uh, I don't know what it, what it was the word for that. He, he's in a little bit of denial with Kiara. And I think that moment, she's just trying to snap him out of it. It's like, do you not understand that I love you? Like, I care about you and I've loved you the whole time we've been friends. And I, I think we, we made that moment work a little. And it's less of like a diss. I don't think Kiara is even off put that he doesn't say it back. I don't think it's that moment. She just wants him to know that she loves him. Why there, why then, like, what is like doesn't make any sense i'm not that's not again the the objective to the scene was to get everyone to go and that this is like a big deal this is like a this is something we got to take care of like right now and jj was like wait like this isn't about us right now this is about this is about getting big john back getting all of us together getting us on the same page and getting the heck out of there and i think jj was like not hearing what i'm saying kind of thing the priest was often delirious, but in a moment of clarity, he spoke of an idol in the city of gold. 
I believed it to be the rantings of his fever, but... Oh, my God. Finding out that, you know, that translation in the, in the new... Uh, the new pages, I guess, of the diary that really didn't make it in, that got, were sent to Clarice Tanny. Um, I think it gives him that hope again. Like, it gives him that, that reason to go for it, you know? He's kind of almost out, and, you know, seeing that, he's just kind of like, I guess I can't be pulled out, you know? And he'd think he still, <laughs> he definitely still uh, feels like he owes Rafe, you know? So however he can get this, uh, the recognition, you know, whether it be finding the Eldorado gold, it's still kind of about making sure his family um, is okay and making sure that that story is known, you know, because who's going to believe a 16-year-old with no evidence, so. Oh, man, that was great. It was really, really fun, especially just, like, um, learning about, like, the, the history, the history of it. Like, I was like, you know, a lot of this is, is really real. I always think that, man, this would be really great to really go on a treasure hunt. Like, I've sat here and thought, like, man, I wonder if we could really do it. Like, let's really find some treasure. <laughs>